Welcome to this week's video. I'm in South Yorkshire and I'm at this quirky building. This is a folly. It's called the Needle's Eye. It's just outside Rotherham on the Wentworth Estate. And we've got clear blue skies and a setting sun. So I thought I'd talk you through how to get sun stars. So if you've done much uh, landscape photography, you'll know that uh, clear blue skies can pretty much be your nemesis. But you can use them for cre to create an effect. If you've got clear skies and you've got a setting sun, you've got a point of light. And all you need is something between you and the sun, that point of light. In this case, it's the folly. And what you do, you just move your camera. In fact, I'll show you now, I'll show you handheld. You just move your camera until the sun's just peeping around the corner of the folly, a tree, whatever you've decided, a rock. And settings wise on your camera, you just need a really small aperture. So you've, you've probably all seen that bokeh effect, the lovely smooth creamy background where pinpoints of light just become nice spherical blobs. But that's when you've got your aperture wide open. If you close your aperture down to f16 or, or smaller, what you get is you get that, that pinpoint of light and those beautiful star trails. Uh, yeah, I'll show you in camera and you can see what I mean. I'm currently at f8, so quite an open aperture. And as I move left to right and the sun starts to peep around the building, I close down my aperture to f16, maybe f18, and I'm going to have to just up, slow down my shutter speed there to uh, compensate. And there you go, there's a sun star. So yeah, that's it. Get your settings nice and nice small aperture. Don't worry too much about your shutter speed. And the only other tip I can say is make sure your lens is really clean. Any dust, any finger marks on that lens, oh, they'll just look horrendous in your final image. So just while we're waiting for the sun to set, I thought I'd share with you a little bit of the history and some of the quirky tales about this place. Um, I love that. I love this sort of thing and uh, legends and folk tales. So this was built in the mid to late 1700s by the Marquis of Rockingham, and apparently somebody um, bet him made a wager that he couldn't drive his uh, coach and horses through the Ivor Needle. So he built this, I, think, I believe he had to build it within a year. And sure enough, he could drive his right through the middle, through that arch, he could drive his coach and horses and he, he won the bet. And the other thing, the other story that, that goes with this, this folly, which is a little bit more, uh, a bit grisly, a bit more macabre. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's these holes, sort of in a line, and they go along this wall, this, this side. And they're musket holes. And basically someone's been uh, doing target practice or shooting at this, at this side of the folly. And the story goes that, uh, well, if you look, they're roughly head height. I'm, I'm a short ass, I'm five foot seven, but they're, they're roughly head height. The tale is that it, it was used uh, for uh, an execution, a firing squad. And whether that's true or not, or just a legend, I'm not sure. I've heard that, I've heard people t uh, have told me that uh, it happened during the English Civil War, but that doesn't add up because that was the 1600s. This was built in the 1700s, so yeah, at least that side of it doesn't add up. But yeah, they're definitely musket holes, and yeah. So. So, certainly an interest, interesting tale to this place. So yeah, let's see what this sun's doing. Let's see if we're going to get a bit of colour in that sky. Uh, sadly, uh, we've got a bank of clouds on the horizon and uh, yeah, that's snuffed out the sun, so I'm not getting any colour in the sky. And of course, it's obliterated the sun, so I can't even get any more sun stars. But the only thing I'm getting in the sky now is a couple of contrails, which are, are always frustrating as a couple of planes are going across. Uh, yeah, now luckily I was here in October, um, in autumn, and the leaves were in, in colour, it looked uh, fantastic. I got another bright sunny day. Uh, I managed to get a few shots, a few shots that day and a few sun stars. So what I'll do is I'll mix in some of that footage and those still images. Um, so hopefully you'll see those sun stars. Might give you a little bit of inspiration. Maybe you could get out there and uh, try this technique for yourself. Just remember, all you need, bright day, nice bright uh, sun, and just something to put between you and that sun, just so that you can, uh, yeah, peep around and create that sun star.
that's it for this week hope you like that little technique hope you're going to give it a try uh, so until next time I'll be seeing you Well, here's that bonus so-called interesting fact. So on the edge of the field, what was once a parish boundary, is this vinegar stone. And it harks back to the days of the plague. So when a village was completely quarantined, so that they could get supplies into the village, food, bread, etc., what they'd do is they'd deal with traders who would leave food by the stone, and in exchange they'd put money in this hollow that was full of vinegar, and that would sterilise and keep the money safe. Just a little bit of social history there. I just love this kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.